Okay. Next up, <clears throat> we have a session on analytics by Dan Weisberg, who is super passionate about analytics, data visualization, data mining, anything where he can figure out what's actually going on behind the scenes. And if any of you ever launched a game without analytics in, he'll probably be really angry. Uh, here's Dan Weisberg. Thank you. So I'm the analytics advocate here. And uh, more than, uh, you know, I like data very much, but I like people to use data. And, uh, and my job is to help people make better decisions using data. And every time that I think about data, I like to think about, you know, how does it look like in real life? And if we can just play this video, please. Olives also bought Chardonnay. Oh, all right. 78% <laughs> of people who viewed Chardonnay also bought what to do when he's not that into you. Mm. Well, I'm just wanting to get some olives, so... Why not buy all three? Oh, yeah, because I don't really need them. It'll give you a total saving of seven pence. Uh, I think I'll still pass, actually. Just some wine, then. No, sorry. What? Oh, you didn't know. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm, I'm not buying this wine. I... Are you sure you want to remove that item from your basket? Yes. Why not try something new? What, and buy something totally random that I've never shown any interest in? Wilson Cape Memorial mug? Yeah, OK, I'll take the mug. Obviously, I'm joking, aren't I? That's how, you know, our users, they feel very often. And, and uh, you know, sometimes we're just trying to help them, but sometimes, you know, we annoy them. And I think analytics is a, is a great way to understand when are we annoying them and when we are helping them. And another example that I like, so if you were, I mean, let's suppose you have uh, an offline store and uh, you want to know what's going on with the, you know, with our uh, users. And you just stand in front of your uh, store and count people coming in. You know, what kind of things they're looking at, what kind of uh, transportation they're coming with. And then you would come up with a table like this one, right? You have users, people, you have your app, which is a store. You have device, vehicle. And then you could start understanding more about these people. So people coming using, you know, people coming uh, with trucks, they bounce a lot because, you know, maybe you don't have a... Uh, uh, parking lot for trucks. But then you see that those that do manage to find a, a parking place, they buy a lot of stuff from the store. So you could you know, optimize your store for trucks, right? And the same with devices, on the, with apps. And uh, I just moved to the UK one year ago. And uh, this uh, winter, we did a trip to Wales. And uh, it's a very nice place. And we went to one of these pubs. Uh, and I was struck with this quote, you're a stranger here, but only once. And I think that's you know, the ultimate objective of uh, analytics is to understand people from the first time that they come to the app or to a website or to any place, because they're giving us so much information about what they're doing, what kind of things they like, where they're coming from. So we could use this information to provide a better experience for the, for the users. And so just to summarize, the two most important things on analytics is, first of all, uncovering bugs and opportunities. So like the example with the trucks, right? We're uncovering something that you know, the app is not working for version you know, Android 4.1 or whatever. So we have to fix this bug. And then learning valuable and actionable information about the, the users, something that you can use to make the experience better. So I'm going to try to, to provide a few uh, techniques to do that with analytics. And the first one, and I think it's the single most important thing on analytics, is segmentation. And I'm going to use two case studies from a Lego building uh, that I think exemplify very well the two types of segmentations that we have. Because you know, after all, data is just like bricks. You can use bricks to build different things and data 
is the same. We got this set in January and uh, has 3,803 bricks and uh, I think it's the largest Lego set in, er, on Earth, right? And, and, and we, we were thinking about, you know, would it be easy or hard to build it? And it, we were very surprised when we opened the box. It's a huge box and then we have four boxes, right? One to four. Of course, you'll open number one first and then you get like dozens and dozens of plastic bags. And then when you open those plastic bags, you have even smaller plastic bags. So Lego, they did all the heavy lifting for us, you know, so that we can accomplish the mission, which is building the Lego, uh, the Death Star, right? So they're doing something, they're planning for us to accomplish a mission, which is build something. Second case study is Angry Birds. Now, my son likes Angry Birds and he likes Lego. So it's very natural that he would want to build Angry Birds out of Lego. And uh, if you go to your Lego room and you find something like that, it's pretty impossible to build because you know, for every bread brick, it will take like five minutes and you know, it would end up taking weeks to build a red Angry Bird. But if you have something like that, by the way, this is the, the Lego factory and the actual you know, the set designers, they sit on those places, on those tables and you know, they, everything that they need, they know where to find, right? So when they have an idea, they're not, they're not organizing this for a mission, like the Death Star, they're organizing this so that they can find whatever they need when they need it, right, on the fly. This is what you come up with, uh, Lego Angry Birds. And how does it relate to Google Analytics? So I believe that segmentation can be uh, divided into two. So it's mission-driven segmentation and on-the-fly segmentation. And I'm gonna show here a few examples on how to do that on your Google Analytics. So first of all, mission-driven. So the number one technique is creating views. So we have this, if you logged into Google Analytics for app, you would see something like that, right? New users, active users, top devices, country. And this, you know, this is very nice. It's very beautiful. I love the UI, but it's not very actionable as it is. So we have to do some segmentation to understand better. You know, if, for example, I am responsible for my app in the US and there is someone else for the UK, so I'm gonna look every day, maybe every week, I'm gonna look for the US numbers, right? And I don't really care about the UK numbers, maybe once a month I want to compare them, but on a daily basis I want to know about US. Now, if that is the case, every time that I get here, I have to segment, right? I have to start a new segmentation and start looking into the data, but I can do that so that if I create a view, every time that I log into Google Analytics, I'll see just US uh, users of my app. So it's very easy, you go to admin, you'll see all your uh, views and then you create a new view and then you can create a filter. And filters you can create for anything on Google Analytics or for most of the dimensions. And here, for example, you can create a, a view just for an app version, for example, app version number two, and you're very, you know, focused on looking at the difference between the, the versions and you can create different views for different versions. So that's number one and there's a big advantage of it is that it saves a lot of time. So instead of every time that you go into Google Analytics, you segment the data, you can plan for it so that it's segmented when you need it. <coughs> now mission driven number two, most people know this woman, Princess, and so every person has three types of identifiers. So the first one is a personal identifier. So it's something that we carry with us throughout life, right? Our gender, color of the skin, our, uh, the color of our eyes. So things that we don't change every day or every week or every year. And then there's daily identifiers, which are things that, you know, we start them with, we start the morning with them, like our hair or makeup or uh, earrings, and then we keep them till the end of the day and then we change them for tomorrow. And then there are the ambient identifiers, which are things that we change every time that we get into a new ambient, things like you know, coats or uh, uh, sunglasses or you know, guns, for those of you like it. 
And Google Analytics is divided in the exact same way. We have visitor level uh, uh, custom dimensions, which are things that we want to measure across visits, right? So if someone uh, purchased something on the app, I want to know every time that this person comes back that this person is a returning buyer, or this person is, for example, a, a, a specific type of visitor, if we have this uh, uh, on your game. And then you have visit uh, or session level uh, custom dimensions. So if you have, when someone opens an app, sometimes you have you know, promotion, promotion of the day, you can try different promotions and then see which one drives purchase, right? And then this is relevant just for the current visit. So you don't want to keep that for the next visit as well, because it probably doesn't affect the next, vi next visit uh, purchase. And then you have uh, page level, screen level uh, uh, dimensions, which are things that if you have different games that you want to group things that happen on different uh, games, you can use the uh, screen level. Now this has a very big advantage that you can use your own definitions, right? So if you have different types of players, you want to see those players listed on Google Analytics and you can segment behavior on Google Analytics based on your own definitions, which you know, is, a, is a great advantage. Now, let's talk a little bit about on the fly segmentation. And just the mission driven that I just spoke about is something that I have to plan for it, right? So something that, you know, you have to talk to people and you have to, it, you start collecting this data just from the moment that you implement them. Right? So that's very important uh, uh, differentiation. Now, on the fly segmentation is uh, something that, you know, you just had an idea and you want to see data for this idea. So if your data is organized, you can uh, find this information. And again, we, we're gonna use user segments. And if you log into Google Analytics, you'll see the same screen, right? Now you have, uh, you wanna see people, you know, behavior by an app version, for example, that you don't have a view for it. You can open on the orange arrow. Then you'll get this uh, interface which are, those are the default segments for uh, mobile apps. And basically, if you click here on, uh, right, I, uh, tablet traffic, right? You want to see just uh, people coming from tablets. And, and then you see all the reports based on tablets. Uh, so the behavior for people using tablets. Now, you can also create segments. So when you open it, you will see that you have uh, all these uh, dimensions that you can uh, segment, dimensions and metrics that you can segment by. And you can choose from, you know, from a list what kind. So you want people that, for example, came to the, web, to, to the app at least three times and spent $50 across these three visits. And, and you want to see their behavior. So that's a great way to, to, to segment traffic. And, and this is really not something that you can uh, build in advance, so that's uh, something on the fly. And the, the big advantage of this uh, uh, on the fly segmentation, is first of all, it's retroactive, so you can see for a past behavior as well. And we also have a solution gallery, which, which is a place where you can download segments from, and you can also upload segments to, and uh, you can use the same segments that your colleagues are using, so it's a very, uh, a uh, uh, scalable way to segment uh, behavior. And I like very much this quote by Brandeis, which is, you know, abhor averages. So right, six meals one day and zero the next is not the same thing as three meals one day and three meals the other. So. If you do not segment your traffic, you're getting a very wrong uh, uh, idea of what's going on. So it's really, really important to, to have segmentation in place. Now let's go through a few uh, reports that I find especially insightful when we talk about analyzing uh, 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 app behavior. And if you can read the...
So we, we have to, to, to focus on the right users, right? That, that's, I think, uh, the single most important thing on, uh, when we're dealing, you know, analyzing uh, our uh, behavior on our apps is to focus on the right people. And there is this report, which is very nice, looks beautiful. I like the, the charts. And one very interesting thing when you look at it, that's the loyalty report, is that, for example, you can find things like on the third session, we can see a drop in conversion, rate, co conversion rates, which is amazing. I mean, there's almost 60% conversion rate on the second session, and then it drops to 22, and then it goes up to 50, and then 30, 43, 32. So there is something very wrong about the third session. Maybe there is you know, some kind of a pop-up or something that is going wrong. So, so that's a great way to find where to focus. So we are losing people on, this, uh, on the third session, and maybe there is something that we are doing wrong there. Now, another one is how to prioritize, right? And, and this is, uh, I'm sorry, just going back. Oops. Yeah, so if you go to audience, and then device and network, devices, operating systems, conversion. That's a bit long, but uh, you can drop me an, an email afterwards. And, I'll just send you a link. I'm sorry. I think I, yeah, no, I, I was trying, yeah. OK, I'm sorry. So the previous report, it's just on behavior, behavior, and then loyalty. So that's the way you find this, the loyalty report. Now, the next one is how do we prioritize issues? And here you can see you know, a table with operating system version. So this is Android, right, 4.3, 4.4. And this is the average of the uh, uh, conversion rate on the website. Now, what we can see is that 4.3 is 0.77% above the average when it comes to conversion rate. But then we can see that you know, 4.0.4 and 4.0.3, we have a significant uh, drop in conversion rates as well. So that's a good way. Should we invest in supporting those uh, uh, versions and then you know you should look at how many people are using them and then you can you know do the math by yourself if you should or should not but that's a great way to to understand how to prioritize those issues based on conversion rates and the last one is behavioral flow and uh, and this is great to see where you have bottlenecks on on the app, and you can see, for example, here I'm segmenting by app version. So those are the app versions that I have, and then you can just click and see the flow of your visitor based on a on app version, and you can see what kind of uh, of bottlenecks you have on the app. Now, some takeaways. First of all, plan for segmentation. I think it's a uh, you know, it's really important to sit with everyone in the company and understand, you know, what each person needs in terms of analytics. So if someone uses only, as I mentioned, U.S., uh, is re responsible only for U.S. traffic or for a certain uh, campaign or for a certain uh, version of the app, you can create a view for this person or for this uh, department so that the person doesn't have to spend so much time every time that he or she comes to the to Google Analytics. Segment like crazy. I think segmentation is the most important thing when it comes to Google Analytics. So it's really important to segment every time that you come to Google Analytics so that you can understand behavior in a better way. Focus on the right users. Prioritize development by conversion. I think it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, way to look at, uh, at uh, prioritization. And optimize user experience uh, using analytics. Now, before I, I, I end, first of all, thank you, Rupert Whitehead, that put together the event, which is uh, a very successful event. And, and second, one of the things that uh, Rupert mentioned to us is that you know, we should think about what kind of feedback we'd like to get from you. And so I would really love to talk to each one of you, you know, after the talk about those three things that I would like to understand how you use analytics. So which kind of report or feature would help you make better decisions using analytics? Who in your organization uses Google Analytics? And you know, 
are there and not uh, customizations for different people that use analytics? And third one, what's the last time that you made a decision based on data? Thank you and happy analyzing. <laughs>